And now the question becomes, what will the future be for not just the Pittsburgh Penguins, but Sidney Crosby specifically? We know they've missed the playoffs, Craig. But man, what a year Sidney Crosby had. And he's made it very clear he doesn't really want to go anywhere. He's an unrestricted free agent after next season. Do you think we could see a contract extension this offseason? And what do you think about the future of this Pittsburgh Penguins team? One thing I want to say, Sidney Crosby is the Pittsburgh Penguins. It, you know, yes, the Pittsburgh Penguins are certainly a team that has had a lot of success, certainly with Mayor Lemieux, but right now it is Sidney Crosby's team. I don't think that I don't think that question can be answered if we're going to see a contract extension. We look at Sidney Crosby, there's no question he's a Pittsburgh Penguin number 87 and everything that goes with it, but he's also highly competitive. I mean, he's had an MVP type season. There's been no drop off in his game. So you look at where Sidney Crosby is headed. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised one bit if he waits until the end of next contract to see where the Penguins are at. And I think it becomes incumbent upon Kyle Dubas and the Pittsburgh Penguins management group to sit with Sidney Crosby and outline what their plans are to make the team competitive. Because mm -hmm. quite frankly, I can't believe that Sidney Crosby and his competitive spirit is going to be any type of happy to be in a place where the team isn't competitive and he doesn't have a chance to win. So that's where it becomes incumbent upon Kyle Dubas and the management team to sit with Sidney and try to express to him, here's what our plans are, here's what we think, and let him weigh in because now he can understand what it means for himself and what does he want to be part of. I don't think he's just sitting in here going, oh, yeah, I'm going to just be a penguin and it'll be great. I'll play 82 games yeah. and I'll do it. It matters to him. At the same time, you know, you look at this team and look like at the deadline they were out of it. They almost played their way into it. Did, did their play toward the end give you a little bit of thought like, okay, maybe they're on for something next year. Maybe they don't have to add that many pieces. Maybe they'll be okay next year. The reason they got into it was because the teams that were in front of them and well ahead of them absolutely flopped. <laughs> like, <laughs> they flopped. But they played well too, well, right? They, I'm not going to take anything away yeah. from the P Pittsburgh Penguins playing well. Don't be fooled. And if you're going to be fooled by that little stretch where they, they got themselves back in, largely because the other teams around them were, were playing so poorly, that is a mistake. This team is flawed. This team is massively flawed in my view. They're not a contender. They're a team that asks too much of too few players. Right. So now you're looking at what they got to do, what Kyle Dubas has to look at doing, trying to add more players, adding more depth into the group, trying to get some stability where they can – grind teams and they can have an ability to push the game into their favor. They don't push the game in their favor. Sydney and Malkin and, and, and Latang and Russ, they come out and push the game in their favor. Then the next group come out and lose it. <laughs> That's not a winning formula. And Kyle Dubas has a massive, massive endeavor in front of him. And that endeavor is not only trying to get the Penguins, but convincing Sidney Crosby that this team can be competitive. I'm curious about their goaltending situation as well, but we got to move on. To the Montreal Canadiens, they extend Martin St. Louis. Very promising future, it seems like. Uh, have you been surprised how effective St. Louis has been as a head coach of the National Hockey League? Because sometimes you think of star players, it doesn't always work, right, as a star player to transfer his game to a head coach. I think when, they, when Kent Hughes hired Martin St. Louis, there was a real history there. You know, Kent's son, Jack, and Marty's son, Ryan, had played together growing up. They played at the National Team Development Program. There was a real understanding of what Marty's approach was. Obviously, they would have talked a lot. And Marty's a very, very smart person. And he, he had coached outside the NHL. But when they brought him in, it was to try to instill what, what I call the esprit de corps. Get everybody to play together, get some enthusiasm. You've clearly seen that with Martin St. Louis. At the same time, you've seen individual players, some younger players really progress, take off, and find their way in the NHL. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of young players in, in, in the system that are really what I would call still in their infancy stages. And, but, but you have somebody there that nurtures young players, that helps them understand what it's going to take, moves them along, guides them along, but also is trying to raise the level of the team. And certainly you can look at where the points are at this year. There's a lot of work still to be done in, in Montreal. But everything that Marty St. Louis has done with this group, from the time he started behind that bench, I think screams somebody you want there, somebody that, yep. th that the players have belief in. And, and I'll add this, Jay. When he left because of uh, his son's injury, and, and, and Marty family's number one in Marty's fun, but when he left and the team kept playing, and I think it, when you instill something really positive in a team and it, and, and it continues to do those things in your absence, yep. 
that to me is making your mark. I think Marty St. Louis has made his mark. The Rick Bonus, Scott Arneal thing, yep. another great example. Yep. Love it. A couple of great examples this year. Craig, thanks for this. This is so fun. It always is. Yeah.